Welcome back to Hannity. Continue our conversation about the real war on women. We sadly have a story that illustrates it right here on American soil. Now, a teenage girl in Arizona was viciously beaten, sexually assaulted by her so-called groom after refusing to take part in an arranged marriage. Now, according to reports, both families were Muslim and from Somalia. Joining me now at the very latest on this story is Fox News' is William Lajeunesse, who joins us from our Los Angeles bureau. William, this is beyond disturbing. You know, Sean, this was an arranged marriage which became a forced marriage when the teenager refused to marry 30-year-old Muhammad Abdallahi in a legally binding Islamic marriage known as Nike. It is that 18-year-old actually ran away, but she returned to finish high school, and that is when her parents forcibly took her to his apartment, threw her inside, and police say she was punched, strangled, and raped. I saw some guys carrying a girl in, so I ran over to the front and I looked at the people and they threw somebody, that girl, in this house and then all of them just walked out. She was just crying and she was just like screaming and shaking her head. Abdullahi put a mattress against the door so she could not leave, but after he fell asleep, she texted a friend who called police. Her family entered into an agreement, a, a nikah with another family. Um, against the girl's wishes. Clearly this is something that she is indicating that she did not want to be part of. Turns out up to 3,000 forced marriages occur in the U.S. the last two years according to the Tahiri Justice Center in Virginia. The marriages typically involved underage girls coerced by parents in some 56 different immigrant cultures including India, Pakistan, Bangladesh and Somalia. And the victims say most American support agencies are not a equipped or don't understand this whole arranged marriage thing, Sean. Police say Abdullahi was covered in blood when they arrived. He's being held without bail on kidnapping sexual assault. But police say she is not cooperating in the prosecution. Back to you. All right, William. Sad report. Thank you so much. We invited a representative of the Arizona chapter of CARE. On this program tonight, they declined our request. They did provide us with the following statement, saying, quote, American Muslims join people of conscience of all faiths in condemning any form of domestic violence or gender inequality as violations of Islamic beliefs. If anyone mistreats or abuses women, they cannot seek refuge in Islam. Islam mandates that consent of both parties is required before marriage can take, up, take, can take place. Forced marriage is an issue of un-Islamic cultural practices, not of faith. Here now with reaction from the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, author of the book, A Battle for the Soul of Islam, Dr. Zudi Jasser is back with us. 3,000 cases a year. This is not unique, nor is it unique in countries that practice Sharia, is it? It isn't. And, you know, this horrific, horrific case of this poor girl and the conspiracy of the families involved, you know, certainly it's not the Islam that I know or any of the Muslims I know. But the bottom line is, is that we have to look at this as a community, that it's the tip of the iceberg. This case in its extreme teaches us, I mean, it's not only this poor girl. Nur al-Maliki was killed by her father here in Phoenix. Um, there was Aya al -Tayimi, Tayimi, who was also abused and tied up in her house here in Phoenix by her family because she was dating and doing things that dishonored the family. And if you look at honor abuse and honor killing, it is a, a symptom of a bigger disease of women not having bodily autonomy and being treated as second and third class, if that, individuals that don't have equality. And that comes from cultures and institutions like Saudi Arabia, Al Azhar University, and others that teach that women are the property and owned by men rather than equal like we but learn in the West. Honor killings, forced marriages, uh, genital mutilation. This is all happening. Um, in some countries under Sharia, the men can marry, is it what, up to four women, in some cases more. Uh, women don't have that right or needing, you know, multiple male eyewitnesses for rape. This is just the reality. And when I bring some of these topics up, people are somewhat reluctant to talk about it. Uh, I felt the guest that we just played earlier, Ms. Al Sharif, was under a little bit of duress in terms of that interview, because when you look at the laws of Saudi Arabia, they differ from what it is that she was saying, do they not? 
Absolutely, and I'll tell you, you know, the, the, the solution to this is empowering Muslim women in America and in the West, because the Muslim women you speak to that are trying to change the Middle East will be put in jail and in prison. I mean, this poor uh, El Sharif lady was put in jail when she tried to have a Facebook page about driving freely. Raif El Bedawi is serving a sentence who has an organization like mine because he talks about women's rights and equality and is being flogged in front so, of mosques by the Saudi government. So you agree with, uh, look, I'll put up on the screen screen, for example, women are not allowed to drive, as she experienced in her life. Women do need male guardians and their permission to leave the house. Um, you know, the same, we have similar problems in, in other countries, Kuwait. Uh, women don't have the right to become prosecutors or judges. No laws prohibiting domestic violence. The UAE, same thing. Men, men can legally discipline their wives with physical abuse. And they also need a male guardian to conclude a woman's marriage contract. And if you go to Oman and, and Qatar and Algeria, Brunei and their women, marital rape is not considered a crime in those countries. So this is a, we have an issue of a real war on women. My question is, as you watched Ms. Al-Sharif, do you feel she was unwilling to explain the truth of life for women in Saudi Arabia for fear of reprisal? It has to be that way because bottom line is, is, Sean, anyone who speaks the truth in Saudi Arabia will end up in jail and be flogged ultimately, and that's what happens. So she had to mar march that line where she talked about wanting to work, talked about wanting to drive, getting the incremental changes, and that's why you have revolutions. The only thing that will change this misogynistic culture of mafia run by men and of the organization, it's not only Saudi Arabia, the organization of Islamic cooperation is 56 countries of misogynistic run societies of men where women don't have rights that are equal and Islam can't be reformed into the modern age because they won't allow it, because they don't want to see these revolutions of, of women and modernity happen, and that's why we have to give them economic independence and we have to work in the grassroots to allow this reform to happen and unfortunately if she's being interviewed from Saudi Arabia she'll try to push that line and then she'll blame the West and other yeah. things because that's the talking points that yeah. the government will allow and, her to say. And, and liberal women in America are more concerned and rarely speak out about this but they talk about who's going to pay for birth control nine dollars a month or or Mitt Romney has resumes of win, women and binders and that's a war on women and they are utterly silent here but Zuri good to see you thank you for being with us